going to uh, do a quick survey here. So if you use poll anywhere. So we'll, let's do the hands. Um, who here does any contract manufacturing at all? How much, uh, so based on that, have you done a lot of selection of contract manufacturers in the last year? Okay. So we'll start with some of the five questions here. Uh, the basic uh, start in point that everybody typically has is the baseline, is it, what's the cost? And if you make the selection just on cost, you may be, uh, in about a year, be very uh, uh, sorry about what decision you made. Um, there's a lot of other things. Also, you might be looking at the quality system and the technical expertise associated with that contract manufacturer. There are many types of contract manufacturers, you know, doing box builds, part assembly, catheter assembly. Um, at Innovise, we do converting, high volume uh, film roll converting, printed circuit board assembly, uh, sterile packaging, and prep. But those are just the baseline that you should be looking at. We're gonna go through five questions on either right information being shared, what kind of product development services they provide, what contract manufa or manufacturing services they provide, is it convenient for you, and is it a good business fit? I've done many, I've been in the industry 30 years, and as part of the, uh, part of there, I've been in the large medical device, I was at Guidant for about 13 years, and that was my first in intro into contract manufacturing. We had an in-house circuit board uh, assembly, and we needed to outsource, and so it was given to me uh, to look for a new house. We ended up choosing a facility down in southern Minnesota called EMD. They were not the fit, they never did medical before, but they had the expertise in the technical side. They were close, um, and cost-wise, I think they worked out. And long-term, they became a long-term partner with Guidant and now Boston Sci. Um, they're now called Benchmark. But, but as part of the uh, process, we didn't use, use a formal process at that time. Since that time, I've been in multiple other medical device companies selecting contract manufacturers, and now I'm on the other side as a contract manufacturer, we have a lot of our customers come to us. And we're trying to provide you know, the right kind of service and support and fit and culturally match each other. So the right information to be shared, um, you should be looking at, the contract manufacturer should be asking you for your device master record. You have to bid this project out, you're gonna go quote it, um, they're gonna need to know where your bill of materials, who your suppliers are, do you have manufacturing work instructions. So if you're moving it or you're doing it yourself already and then moving it, that be, they're gonna want everything that you have in your device master record. If you're a brand new medical device company, you haven't built it yet, that has to be the expectation of the, as the process to uh, do the manufacturing. Um, they're also gonna want to look at previous process validations. If you've done work there already, that's a good starting point. They also might ask you for your design requirements. As part of contract manufacturing, you're gonna to wanna to look at if you need to change some of the manufacturing process for manufacturability, to make it easier, get higher yields. You may have to change things that might affect the design requirements, so they might wanna ask you to see those. Allow you to see your manufacturing space. Will they allow you on your manufacturing floor? I was looking at a couple of different contract manufacturers and they wouldn't allow me in the back, in the, into the manufacturing space. So a uh, little bit of a, uh, pain, uh, and they didn't actually get selected. Um, and as part of the pricing, uh, looking at pricing and volume expectations, the contract manufacturer needs to know a set point and determine expectations for you. Second question about product development services is there's expertise match. Do they match, are they building the right kind of activities? Uh, are they doing packaging? Do they do steriliz help with sterilization? Do they help with, do they ever, have they ever done assembly? Have they ever done catheter assembly? Uh, they're going to also ask about how you do change management. So they should be asking, how are you going to manage? If you send me your device master record, how am I going to manage and maintain it? And then if changes happen, either we're requesting the change from the contract manufacturer or you're requesting change, how is that being implemented? And how does everybody know people are building everything to the right specification? Do they have project management support services? So you need to make sure that your budget and schedule and your communication strategy, what is that gonna look like on a regular basis? And do they, can they meet your schedule? Do they have the people available at the time that you need them? So those are some questions you're gonna ask during the product development support services. The third question, can they provide manufacturing process services? Do they know how to do an IQ, OQ, PQ? Do they have a procedures already on process validation? If you have high volume, are you gonna look at statistical process monitoring? As part of the process, 
do you, are you going to provide any special equipment or tooling to the contract manufacturer? Is the contract manufacturer going to make it all? And if there is going to be special equipment, maintenance of the, the friend of maintenance, calibration, activities, software controls, do they have all those features in place? If they're ISO 1340, if they're ISO 1345, a lot of these processes will be there, but it's your product, and is there unique requirements that they're gonna to have to meet? If your product's gonna become a high volume, do you wanna implement automation? You might wanna start out, for your clinical trial, we're only gonna build a couple hundred parts, and then a year later, you're gonna build a million parts. Is the process, the process is gonna change significantly in order to reduce costs, so you need automation. And can they provide testing services? Do you need electrical testing, mechanical, functional? Uh, one of the uh, companies I was at when I was medical device, we were actually making a device that had a laser associated with it, so we needed optical testing and the security and so safety around laser, te laser testing. Some more manufacturing questions as part of the uh, quoting process you need to ask is, can they do sterile release management if your product's sterile? Could they do sterile prep? sterile release, uh, do they have an inventory management program? Can they manage your inventory and send it to the different distributors or can they even send it, send it to final customers? And that ties in with stocking, the stocking program. And if you're doing a capital type piece of equipment, you're going to the contract manufacturer, you're also going to be, they're gonna be your repair depot. So what do they have for capabilities for managing, doing servicing and repair? And lastly on the manufacturing side, as a medical device company, your customers are gonna ask you, especially the large buying groups, What's your REACH ROHAS compliance? And so you're gonna to have to go back to your manufacturer and they're gonna to have to answer that question and then they're gonna to have to go back to their suppliers. It's a big, it's a chain to be able to get the compliance activities right. So when you get just a price from a quote, what's all included in that? The fourth question, is it convenient for me? How far, how far is the contract manufacturer from you? Are there time zone differences based on that? When can you have meetings? When can you solve issues? If you have, there's always gonna be issues on the production floor. When you have your normal weekly, if you have weekly project meetings. If you're gonna be at multiple time zones, are you building travel costs into this budget for contract manufacturing? In the example here, we were doing a, and the last one is time and effort needed to train the manufacturer. So I was at a company up in Canada, and we were transferring the capital build to a company in the United States. So in order to do that manufacturing, we needed to train them. We had very few manufacturing work instructions. It was a lot of design, it was a very complicated assembly. It was really more of an R&D shop, trying to become a manufacturer. We brought the contract manufacturers up. The three people were supposed to come up and, and learn over like a week or two period. As they were coming up, they had to cross the border. One of the technicians that was coming up was not allowed to cross the border. So all of a sudden, the people that were available to do this training weren't there. So that's something I'm looking at as part of convenience uh, for, the, for you. Another convenience, if you're going off, you know, offshore or to a different country, is there language translations? I've been in situations where they needed the documents translated into the, another country. When I was at Guidant, we had purchased a company that had been based in Switzerland. All their documentation was in German, so we had to translate everything to just to get the build in-house working. Um, they may ask for a retainer up front too because of the amount of time and effort uh, if they need to have people in-house come up and visit you. Uh, then as if it's, multiple, if it's not convenient, there are gonna be shipping costs of shipping the products and that all has to be built into the cost of the product. You may be owning that, but that's all part of the manufacturing cost. And then also with shipping, if it's international, there may be tariffs, uh, agent fees for getting the parts through customs, and there's FDA import controls that have to be implemented as part of moving products across border. Contract manufacturer finishes it, so when we were in, well, I was working the company in Canada, we were manufacturing it in Canada, but we were selling the units into the US, and so we always had to go through customs um, on both the, bringing the components in and then bringing the components, uh, the finished product back to the United States. So is it also, the fifth question, is it a good business fit? Culture, this is more of a cultural question. You know, based on the company's size, we were looking at, well, I was at one medical device company, we needed to do a contract manufacturing for a disposable. And so we, we would need about 200 units made the first year, and then we're looking maybe 600 units the next year, and then, you know, maybe go to 10,000 the year after that. So we started going out, we picked six different contract manufacturers, we tried to stay more local. Uh, based on the six, they all quoted it and they bid it, 
And so we went and started visiting them. Well, the large manufacturers didn't tell us at the time, after, it wasn't until the visit they said, oh no, we're not gonna do your business. So they were too large, we were too small, um, company size didn't matter. We ended up selecting a contract manufacturer that was similar size, small, that could do this and could grow to a certain point. Now, if we ended up creating a, a 10,000 parts a year, they could probably handle that, but they probably couldn't do 100,000 parts a year. So that's dealing with manufacturing capacity. And also, with a good business fit, and you're looking at cultural, can you pick which team members, can you interview the team member at the contract manufacturer that's going to be your person, your point of contact, or your project manager, to make sure that they culturally will fit with what your organization's trying to do. And last couple of questions on good business fit. Um, how are you gonna do communication? There are lots of ways. Small manufacturers don't always have the technical capability um, for information sharing. You might just be using Dropbox, but I've had co uh, large contract manufacturers. They have a website. You upload files there. It's all, bun it's all tracked electronically, so that really makes the communication process easier. Are you gonna set up weekly calls for task assessments? If you have a printed circuit board, can they accept PDX files? That's the international standard for how you manage all the components that are on a circuit board, because there's typically hundreds to thousands of components. And also with that, uh, the next part of this is client references. Will they give you client references and their site? How many sites do they have? So some of the large contract manufacturers may start in one site, but then they want to talk to you about offshoring it or you know, moving it to a lower cost Facility, so there might be two trans, might be one to transfer in for initial development, and then one for long, long-term production. So, based on those five questions, I'm going to show an example here on sending out an RFQ. If you're the medical device manufacturer, you want to send an RFQ package out. Now, as you develop an RFQ package, like I said, you're going to have a lot of the same things that I mentioned here. You want to make sure your bill of material, your basically your device master record, is part of the quote, and specifically define a target range, target quantities you want quoted. When we were doing the disposable I mentioned, we sent it out to these six manufacturers, we put the package together, we had a formal form, and they all came back differently, even with that. So part of that is understanding what their contract manufacturers have their own process for quoting, it's gonna look slightly different every time. You need to understand that and make sure that it ties out so you can do a one-for-one -one comparison between the different manufacturers. And you want to rank your responses from zero to four. Um, I'm using this a simpler scale. One four is a very strong match, and zero is no match at all. So we're going to take an example here of a, um, here's what the matrix is going to look like. So we're going to take the five questions, but they're going to be weighted as the same level of quality system and part and cost. I had done this previously. We had first, at the one company, we had done, to, I went to a disposal manufacturer, and we just went totally on cost. And we started on that process. After one month, we abandoned it. The cost, the cost quote didn't match. There was all these extra service fees thrown on, all these extra costs thrown in, and the, I couldn't actually say that we were gonna save money or not with that manufacturer. So this five additional questions really is gonna help you make the decision, make sure it culturally it fits. So we're gonna use a, an example of a small electro cautery device. It has a circuit board in it. And we're gonna look at four manufacturers. One's a medical device electronics assembler. They're in the same state, so they're close by. Uh, medical device packaging assemblers in the same city even. So they're really close. I can go over there after lunch and just talk to them. Uh, a third would be a medical device catheter manufacturer. It's a different kind of product, but they know the medical device. They have 1345. They're in a different state, but they're gonna low bid because they wanna get into the business. And the fourth is a commercial contract circuit board house. They wanna get in the business too, we want to get into medical, so they're going to probably be the cheapest, but they're not going to have the quality system that you want. So based off of this, um, the rankings would end up with, as you see here, the quality systems for the first two are medical device, they're going to be a fours. The third one was not quite there as a catheter, but the fourth one, it was a zero for their quality system. But their price on C and D were the best. So if you just went strictly on price, C and D would be your choice, you'd visit them and make the decision. But if you look at the specialty information section, you'd end up that A would probably be the highest and C and D wouldn't be. Development services, you know, the one with, uh, that has a lot more experience would be ranking a lot higher, that's B. Manufacturing services, same thing. Convenience, closer, the better, the farther away, um, and the communication, the tools they have, be lower, and business fit. 
So an example criteria here, A and B is the companies you want to look at instead of C and D. Because overall, your overall life cycle cost of that product would be cheaper taking down all these things that are required as part of a medical device manufacturer. So in summary, as picking it, you want to make sure you align the needs of the manufacturer with your needs in these five questions. Um, so cost is the only factor. Just because they're ISO, also, just because they're ISO 1345, that's good. They got a baseline they can build off of. That doesn't mean they know how to make your product. They have to, you have to be working with them and understand the product itself to build it out and align your needs with the contract manufacturer's needs. That's going to give you the best solution. So as part of this, for a complete supplier relationship management system, so this is just one aspect, supplier selection. Supplier relationship management is this whole big thing where you're looking at beginning from supplier selection, qualification, all the validation work, ongoing controls, and then ongoing inspection and collecting the data. And the material acquisition process is part of that aspect. Um, I'm at Innovise, and we also have a sister company, Consiliso, and so at Consiliso.com we have a template procedure for these documents. Um, I also have a, I have a book out on Consiliso, which is, defines how to design integrated business processes across your entire company, not just, it's just how 1345 would fit into that architecture. And there's a new book coming out, The Blueprint, which is a textbook on Consiliso also, that this is just one tiny aspect of Consiliso, of how you try and integrate the structure and make sure you include all the requirements when you're designing products, when you're designing your supply chain, when you're designing your design controls. So question is, once you've selected your supplier, how do you integrate that into your ongoing controls for that supplier? So as part of your supplier selection, the manufacturing aspect is really key. When you're doing the process validation at the contract manufacturer, what are the things they're looking for um, and they're finding during the validation work? And so you determine what your key controls are. I mean, the specifications might have 50 or 100 things that are required, but during your validation, you're gonna find out which ones, as you look at your PPK as during your validation, which ones are more on the edge? Which ones have the more, most variability? Which ones have the most variability due to input material too? So you're gonna be looking at the key things during your process validations and using those as your inputs. Now, depending on the kind of product, if you're making a really simple product um, and you're, you can prove that your PPKs are above 1.33, you might not have to do any of those parameters, won't have to be part of your incoming inspection. But if you know you're tighter on certain parameters, you're gonna to want to maybe ask the supplier to give you data with every load. Or if you're, if I was, when I was back at Guidant, every pacemaker and defibrillator, we were serialized. And so we actually had to have data on every single device. Um, on high volume disposables, you're not gonna do that. You can use statistical process controls. And as part of statistical process controls, you want to um, make sure that your limits are set and you have more action limits. And so it may be telling on a regular basis. Another way of doing that instead of if you don't want to collect data on every load because you know your quality is good, you might, depending on your volume, have quarterly meetings or annual meetings with your contract manufacturer, keeping, keeping the relationship going. Okay. Um, Innovise is in booth 311. I have uh, copies of my first book uh, available there. If you want to pick up a copy, you can stop by the booth after this. I'll give you a signed copy. Uh, anything else then? I think we're done.